Uh, nope. He had a grave. So. And so you can always go back to the table and do a percentage change. You can do go back to the commodity. And the same thing you can do the quick. Yeah. I have to bring it in? No. I just click just click on the marks, the commodity and the marks. Here. And here you can go back to the edit the shelf, whatever. But because the sum of tons is in the row up here, just mm -hmm. click on this up here. And you can do your quick calculations. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the percentage of the total. And so now it shows up the percentage of the total. Okay. Hmm. It doesn't do a whole percentage. It's yeah. the percentage of the total. So you, you, you can edit and shelf. You can do difference. You can do rank, whatever you want yeah, to do. Yeah, I'm going to edit and shelf. So, so basically, if no one has anything else to add on this data set, we're going to close it out. Just close it, whatever you want to do, I don't care. Just edit, no, just edit it, just close it. Okay, now go back to your the folder that your information was in. Go down to the, the folder. And we're going to click on the County Business Pattern Data Set Workbook. Double click on, on the County Business Pattern Data Set. On the bottom, but it's not a it's not a scrolly. It's a. Uh, but that's still helpful. Right, and then you can always go to the very bottom, and the very 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 bottom on the left, there's three buttons: the mm -hmm. sheet sorter, sheet shorter, film strip. So click on film strip, and oh, it lets you okay. look at at each file, so you can get a heading of what it is. Okay. And you can leave that there, and you can just modify it. Now, when you were clicking all those ones, basically what you were doing is you were creating. <coughs> every time you clicked it. Mm. Yeah. Well, because I really wanted to get it. Yeah, so you just went click happy and I created did. all these new worksheets. I did, on purpose. Yeah, no. It's, so the other one is the film strip, which is that one. You click on the middle. You know, it's like the file sort. So you have some, you have some ways that you can <laughs> build on the very bottom right-hand corner. You can, look at, you can look at all the images that you developed. Okay. Click on the one next to it. Then click on the one next to it. Third one. So you have you have different ways that you can look. So yeah, after a while, what will happen is you'll have 500 Tableau view files all over the place, <laughs> and you're like, well, which is where's workbook four? And, and so it's just it's just kind of nature of the beast. So let's go to this data source. Actually, no. Let's go. Let's just create a new worksheet. Okay. This is the county business pattern data set. So we're going to look at employment. So we're going to go down. We're going to look at uh, let's, uh, let's do a state. Drag state over. Yes, that's fine. We have state. And uh, the null is just to delete that. That's a uh, data thing that I forgot to move to the data set. I just drag year over. Okay, so there's three years. And now we're going to add employment. Go down to the measures. And you'll see where there is a go up. CBP <coughs> estimate and just going to drag employment. And there, you have the employment. Now, this is the one where somewhere I'm having a multiplication glitch 
and I'm trying to figure out where it is. Uh, you know, um, like Louisiana has 29 million people that work in Louisiana, when that's more like actually probably like 10 people that work in Louisiana. Four of them in the room. The other six, I don't know what they're doing. And so I'm showing you this knowing that you can't rely on these numbers because there's a, a multiplication glitch in the joins. I've got to figure out where it happened to it. But just to give you, but so you have numbers. So we can actually start doing the analysis. So here's where we're at. Let's go to Mississippi since Strong's on the line. So we go down to Mississippi. We just keep Mississippi. Keep only. I think I know where the glitch is. I think it's in the next codes. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the next codes. In the dimensions, there's something called next digit. Up. And then see? Okay, next, drag that in. Yeah, just put it there. And so what's going to happen is it's going, I have different next codes in here. I have a one-digit next code, two-digit next code, and a four-digit next code. And I think that's probably where I'm getting the multiplication in. Mm -hmm. So the one-digit next code is just simply all employment in the state, no big deal. The two-digit next code is broad industry clusters. Four is a much more detailed. So we're only going to use one. So just click on, actually, exclude one and exclude four. Okay, so now we have three million people working in the state of Mississippi. Now we, now we want to know what industries are they working in. So now we go to the NAGS code. That's it, NAGS code's lookup table, and we're just going to drop that NAGS code U.S. title. Drop that in. Okay, and now we know where they're working. So, construction, education, healthcare, and what we're going to do now, as I mentioned earlier, take the sum of employment, sum of employment, the from the measures. Go to the measures box. Very go to the sum of employment in the measures box. Go up to the CBP, and then go to employment and drag it into the color. And now we have the same thing. Now we're highlighting. What's the biggest jobs in the state of Mississippi? Okay. Yeah, my first reaction is to take this and put it in color, but then it does weird Yeah, it, I always find you add the color. I find that if you build the table and then add color, it makes more sense. So basically what we're going to do, just to repeat for everybody, we are going to add employment. We're having a uh, data thing over here I'm trying to sort out. <coughs> okay. Does anybody have any question on this table that we're at now? And just for shits and giggles, we're going to go to the the analysis, and we're just going to do a percentage of the table. I'm sorry, the column. So basically, this shows that you know, on average, 25, 26 percent of all the jobs in Mississippi are in the healthcare services, accommodation, and food services, and the retail trade. So now I have a special code that that I that's actually not special code, but I actually put this code in. It's called the goods and services. So you can put a link in here saying whether it's the goods producing industry, these are the ones that are more that actually produce and consume materials or the service industry, which is healthcare, retail, financing, things of that nature. These are the codes that the US government uses. If you notice, transportation and warehousing and wholesale trade are considered to be service industries because they don't actually ship or create goods. But Again, it's just another way of looking at the data set. So let's build another data set. We're going to go to another uh, worksheet. Let me just give you getting things now. 
Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our same example. We're going to add um, Mississippi. Just we're going to limit it just to Mississippi. Okay. Now what happened is if you just drag it right over, it knows it's a geography field, so it just makes it a table. Did everybody get a, a map of the United States with with just bars on it? No. The, okay, let me step back. Just do it back. Jackie takes the state. See how the state has a geography on it? Yeah. Okay, when she just drops it in the middle where it says drop a field here, it knows it's a geography field. So it just makes it a geography. So now what she can do, no, just do it back, just go back to it. Now we're going to take employment, and we're going to drop employment on top of that. Now what we have is the states that have more employment. So now what we can do is we can come back and do, for each state, go to the goods, the next code, goods or service, and you can drop that into the table, and now you can look at the percentages <coughs> of which ones are goods or services. So what I did is, again, this is just me knowing all this stuff, not paying attention. I bring goods and services in. I want to make this, I want to make this the pie chart. So I come up here and I change it to pie. You can go into the automatic shape, make it pie. And I also need to make it color. So I select color too. So now I have my color. Blue, I don't like this blue green because it's so close. I can come back to here, I can edit the colors, and I'm going to make no yellow, I'm going to make green, and I'll make this gray. Actually, it's too close. I'll make this yellow, I'll make this gray. And then I apply, and now I have a chart that basically shows, you know, the jobs. And if I want to get really fancy, I can take goods and services and drop it in here as a label and then I change that label to oh, I should be able to make it a percentage <coughs> um, I'll, I'll have to, I can't remember how to do that off the top of my head but basically you have a chart and if you don't want you want to make things a little bit bigger you just simply some of employment go to size you make it bigger so what? I wonder if I could, if I just wanted the chart. You can do the chart. Could just yeah. Make it charged. And, and then, then okay, now, no, okay, wait, wait, go back. Do the back arrow. This is a good, good thing I just didn't think about. Okay, if you notice, we have a page that has <coughs> a chart, has goods and services, whatever, some of the exports. We want to make it a chart. So we go to show me, and we hit the data, the actual table upper left hand side of the show me button. Now this looks goofy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my ribbon there is a set of boxes in the middle ribbon there is a set of three boxes with an arrow right th there's a no not that one it's right, right no you're going to stop slow 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 it's three boxes across two boxes down with an arrow you're going to change the rows for the columns, two more over. Two left or oh, right? Right. Two left. No, here? you're going to slow. That's it. Swap rows with columns. It's three boxes up, three boxes down. Hit that button, and now you have a table that looks more consistent with that much variance. Okay. <coughs> so one of the things I forgot to mention earlier is let's go back to the, this chart right here. You want to give this boss you want to give this data to somebody. There's a lot of different ways you can get data out of Tableau. So this table, I'm going to go to data. 
which is in the ribbon, and it's going to give me, I'm sorry, it's worksheet. I'm going to go to, I can go down, I can copy this information, and I can copy it as an image, I can copy it as a data, or I can copy it as a cross tab. So depending on how I'm going to use it, if I'm going to put it right into Excel, then I go to export. And I can do the same thing. I can export it as an image, I can export it as data, I can export it as Excel. So when, when I'm, when after I get something done, I can then put it into another program if I want to do formatting, if I want to put it into a document, or I want to do something else. Now another thing I can do is I can take the same piece of work and I, I can go to File. And one of my options in File is Print. So I can print it as a regular print file or I can print to a PDF. If I go to print the PDF, so I go print the PDF, I have options up to what I want to print. I can print out the whole workbook. I can print out active sheets. I can select a few sheets. <coughs> and I can print them out in different formats. So the idea is as you're doing the work and you put some charts together, you can print them out as a PDF. You can use them as handouts. You can put a presentation, whatever you want to do with them. So a lot of times when people do these visualizations, they look good on the computer, but you got to show them to somebody. Well, you're not going to take your laptop with them and say, look at how great my visual is. You want to be able to hand them, physically hand them something or email them something. So that's the Tableau gives you a lot of ways to, to take information and do it. Now, you can also do, you know, like a, a window snipping, things of that nature, yeah. depending. I mean, you, there's a lot of ways to get information out. But... Tableau also lets you export the data as well. So you can actually build all this stuff, you can export it to something else. So I didn't mention that earlier with the FAF group, but that's one of the things that a lot of people don't talk about with Tableau is the fact that you're, you have a lot of flexibility about how to get the information out of Tableau. We talked about presentation mode, now we're talking about exporting the PDF, like for instance, we go to worksheet, we're going to just go ahead and do the, we're going to copy this, go down to export, and we're going to just do it across tab to Excel. And then open up Excel, and there's my data. So if I want to actually do something with the data in another program, I want to manipulate it, I can do that there. So. So not only is it very good as an aggregator of bringing information together, it has a lot of ways of getting information both from a data perspective and from the visual perspective out. So you build these great charts. Like for instance, for those people who are in the room, one of the things that I did to help me prepare is I printed out all the PDFs of all the worksheets. Just so I can have them to reference, which I never did. So because I know what they look like. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is there's a lot of ways to get information out of Tableau. So let's go back through the actual data source. So let's go back to the data source, the metadata, and we'll talk through all this stuff. So basically, there's a number of data sets here. The <coughs> county business pattern data set is, um, is a census produces a survey of annual employment, first quarter employment, and March 12th employment. So you have different variables that you can use to look at employment trends. Um, and there's a lot of data, so we're going to do data sort A to Z by table. You should know what that is right now. And so what we're going to do is you'll have things such as... You can update now, that's fine. It's a 100 meg file. It takes a mm. few minutes to do it. Okay. Your stuff to look at. Do they have the scenes that let once everything's in? Okay. Now, I kept all these in. They have a number of things about noise. Is it accepted? Is it not? Does it meet statistical rigor? Does it not? It has a first quarter estimation, the noise field, and that's the census's way of talking about the purity of, this, of the number in that 
that zone. So it's actually metadata about the number that it's talking about. What's the first quarter <coughs> payroll, the annual payroll, and then of course you see this, the, um, the census information about the census city and the census date, which doesn't work, but the, so they're still there. We have annual employment. We have the employment flag about how good the information is. And then you have these fields that starting with EST, N, 10, whatever. So if you just scroll over a little bit, you'll see all of these fields. And what they're basically telling you is establishments with one to four people, establishments that's establishment N1 to, N to four, establishment N20 to 49 is 20 to 45 employees, establishment five to nine. So if you want to do something and look at where am I, where are the big industries are in my state from an employment perspective, if I'm looking at some type of land use pattern, I want to know where my larger businesses are, that's how you would do that. You could do some estimates on, not really land, I mean, you can't really no. do land use, but you can get a proxy over where, where my larger employers are. Larger right. Them. So, and that's why that's there. And if you go over a little bit more, you have this thing called establishments. How many actually establishments are in a particular county? So you have the FIPS and you have the NAICS codes. And the NAICS codes are one digit is just a total. Two digit is, a, again, it's got two digit NAICS, four digit NAICS. And we'll, as we go over, we'll start seeing more and more what that is. And then we have the year. And then we have this new merge file. I actually took the 41,000 mile network and there was no good way of doing it, so it's ugly as hell. But I had to basically do all this concatenates and joins so that you can do a search on just like I-65 mm. and just I-65 shows up. In the example, we talked about 64. <coughs> we have the state, we have this, and then some of these things can be cleaned out, like I've got state FIPS three or four times, they don't need to be there. And then if you look at the um, NAICS codes, you see where it talks about, you know, whether it's agriculture, forestry, things of that nature, and goods or services. So there's a lot of information here. I have all the counties here as well. I have the census population as well. So, um, and that's the field of Thanksgiving and like duplication is that one thing right there. Just mm -hmm. adding it up for all the variables. Mm -hmm. So I have the estimates. So basically, you have a lot of information here on the counties about their businesses and their business patterns. So let's let's all the way go over. In fact, I'm just going to move that. We're just going to come here. We're going to do a new sheet, and we're going to say, okay, we're going to look at a year, and we're going to look at employment. Measures? Yeah. No, we're just. I'm just trying to figure out what next code I want to use. We're going to do two digit, and we're going to do agriculture. So what I do is I made it two digit, which limited it. I'm only going to do agriculture, so I come here and I just keep only. So now I've limited it to two digit next codes for this agriculture. And so what I do come back here is I'm going to say, I wonder how many firms that is. So I come here and I do the establishments and I drop that in. Now I have the number of establishments for agriculture. I originally put it on the columns because I wasn't paying attention, but I put it on the rows and that's where it is. I could also put it here as the, the as a row. Yeah. I don't see where two digit is. I see next digit. Where is that? Do a filter. Okay. I did a filter. Okay. So does everybody have a table that looks like this? I know I just kind of got click happy. Yeah, you got click happy. I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, okay, I'll go slow. I know. I just, I'm just sitting there going, la, 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 it's late in the day. <laughs> I was laughing. Okay. So what I did is I went to next two digit. I want to just do, or next, again, I have... One is only total, two is big broad categories, four is detail. I do two, and I hit apply. I'm only interested in agriculture, so I come here, and I'm going to add the NAICS title, T 
to here. And so I just select agriculture, keep only. And then I just want the number of establishments, so I drop it and I put it in. I think <coughs> format I had up here. What did you keep on? So that last part was uh, you went to, where did you go for that filter again? Which filter? Nick's title. I'm sorry? The Nick's title. The Nick's title is in the <coughs> Nick's code's lookup table. Okay, and then put that in a filter. Right. Now what I can do is, because I have the next digit limited to four digit here, I can always remove this title, NAICS, and I can remove it. It still keeps the agriculture here, but then I can add the four digit NAICS underneath it. I'm still looking at the two digits. Is that the filter? Got my establishments. I have to do. That's something else I need to do. Or CBT. What was it in code? Title? No, what I need to do is I need to create a join, a oh, grouping, okay. so that you can click on the one and I'll scroll down to the next one and I'll mm -hmm. keep the hierarchy. I did not do the hierarchy linkages. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, a note for myself, just not clean data work. What I was talking about is I forgot to do this. That's why I made a note to myself where I could take agriculture and I could click on it and I could drill down into it mm -hmm. by putting a hierarchy in. So I could drill all the way down from one to two to four and I just mm -hmm. forgot to add a hierarchy. That's my my fault. So I'll have to do that. So I have this table with forecast by year, number of establishments, and then I want to look at how many of those establishments are, um, you know, one to four people. I can just drag that in. I just put it in, make it a row. And so it's number of establishments, so I'm one to four. So the, the functionality here